Yo, 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 this is Dane. And this is Tim. He was just taking a big fat swig of water when we started recording. That's okay. <laughs> You're listening to the 15th episode of Was It Worth It? Brought to you by Shark Tank Media. That's shark with a C for cute boys. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> okay, and if you've never heard... done. <laughs> he walked away. If you've never heard of the show before... Tim and I buy and play a computer game. We tell you guys if it was a solid purchase or a big mistake. So what did we play this week, Tim? So this time around, we played Octodad, Dadliest Catch. A game developed by Young Horses, which is consists primarily of some a group of s- former students, rather, who, as a school project, created the um, prototype game called Octodad. Uh, it's an interesting adventure game where you... <laughs> play an octopus disguised as a dad. Yeah, I almost said C for cuttlefish earlier. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) So yeah, Octodad is pretty much that, and you're an octopus disguised as a dad. The interesting thing about it is you have to control each limb separately, and the graphics of this game, or sorry, not the graphics, but the physics of this game are wacky and and goofy, (laughs) and that's what makes it interesting, is that you're just... Even the most mundane task becomes difficult because you're controlling each limb separately and your body's flailing around in weird ways that don't necessarily make sense. Stuff is falling all over the place. Yeah, exactly. And um, to add on top of this, there's a suspicion meter where if you run into too many things, knock too many things over, if you slap people, exactly, I was gonna say, if you hit too many people enough times, you know, you can do that three or four times and get away with it. Just like real life, you know what I mean? (laughs) So. That's pretty much it. You're you're the you're an octopus disguised as a dad, getting through life and just getting into wacky situations. So I guess we'll break down our experiences with the game. I'll go first. I loved the first Octodad game. It was short and there wasn't too much to do, but it was a student game and it was free. And of course, it was really hilarious and charming and extremely unique. Uh, so when I saw the Kickstarter for Dadliest Catch was a success, I became really excited. I really anticipated this game. I knew that as long as Dadliest Catch offered more of what the first game had to offer, but with more production quality, that there'd be no way I'd be let down. And I wasn't for the most part. I mean, the game is absolutely hilarious. Uh, I thought the voice acting was superb, even if the voices of your children can get annoying at times. Um, but the writing was excellent. Uh, there are a lot of really good jokes, and I was laughing pretty often. And uh, the music isn't bad. Uh, there's some nice tracks in the aquarium. Some of the tracks have like a 50s thing going on, since Octodad himself is like a 50s father, <laughs> almost. Um, now, for the bad, uh, I have to say, as hilarious and unique as it is to play Octodad, you know, clumsily moving your bottom tentacles one at a time, struggling as you try to grab and interact with your surroundings, uh, it kind of gets draining after a little while. Uh, while Dadliest Catch is pretty short at about two hours, there's still a lot more to do than there was in the original, and I found myself needing to take breaks due to the nature of the gameplay. Like, it can be really, really entertaining to watch someone play this game, but it can also get frustrating really quickly if you're just playing it solo with no one to entertain but yourself. Like I said, it's only about two hours long, so it didn't hurt too much to have to take a few short breaks. But that clumsy gameplay, it also made some uh, sequences where you're expected to sneak around or climb on top of things really frustrating. Like, it would expect you to stealth or walk on narrow catwalks, but obviously it's really hard to do that with the way the controls are laid out. And that was obviously what they were going for, but it was still a pain to retry the same areas several times because you're just flailing about and it's impossible to control Octodad, yeah. at least with the mouse and keyboard. Not like a roguelike. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Uh, we both use mouse and keyboard, so we don't really have anything to say about using, like, gamepad. Yeah, um, the reviews that I read, which were several, uh, pretty much unanimous that it's much easier on a controller. Gotcha. Yeah, so. Now, I'm not sure if that would take away from some of the game's intended, like, goofiness with the controls. Sure. Um, but I'd say maybe it's safe to say that if you're going to play solo, play with a gamepad. If you want to entertain all your friends, play with a mouse and keyboard sure. and just fumble around, because that's funny. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, as a whole, the game wrapped up really nicely. Uh, even though it occasionally got frustrating and was a bit short at two hours long, the game's uniqueness, humor, and charm definitely pulled through for me, making it worth it at $15. That's fair. So I hadn't played the original Octodad. In fact, I was um, unfamiliar with the Octodad at all other than a brief mention I'd seen uh, calling it the High in Public Simulator, uh, which I thought was a <laughs> good name for this game. But, uh <laughs> I didn't know much about the game. I I saw a trailer and I became really excited for it. Entering the game, the game just starts out great. It's hilarious and and you're you're just going 
through everyday life doing the mundane things and you're, you know what I mean, grilling burgers, mowing the lawn, and and, and that it has this charm and this comedy and this, and it was brilliant for the first hour or so. And then I feel like the game lost its way because the, the beauty and the charm of this game was just trying to do the mundane things and, and, and getting in these wacky situations, you know, flailing around trying to do everyday things. And then the game became as wacky and as out of, out there as the control schemes are, which sure. didn't feel right to me because it's like suddenly you're not this goofy dad trying to blend in. You were goofy dad trying to f be the hero, but having to flail around, walk like you said, walk on catwalks am among things of you know big things of flames and things like this. And it I felt like the game just they they had it right, and then they changed gears and for the worse. I, I feel like there were way too many frustrating parts later on. Like, the level design was super simple, but it was still difficult because of the control schemes. So it wasn't like the there was clever level design that made it difficult or anything. It was just a utterly broken control scheme. Intentionally. It was intentionally that way because that makes it fun in the early part. But in the later part, when you're actually having to do puzzles and things like that, the control, control stream does nothing but constrain you. The game just it was utterly frustrating for the last half hour Not, uh, almost no fun was had there were a few parts that were funny like you said i agree with you the writing was very funny the voice acting was very good the music i loved i thought the music the theme of the music mat matched the theme of the game perfectly i felt and yeah, I, I thought the, th I the music was really good in that respect so i really enjoyed that but you know when it came down to it i had an hour of great fun Roughly a half hour of meh, and then a half hour of frustration. At $15, I, I can't say this game's worth it. Like, it just, it failed too much. Despite all it did right, it still was too much of a broken game. Okay, I mean, that's fair to say. I, I feel like, personally, the aspects of it that felt broken, I think, still fit with their vision of it just, you know being uh, uh, really goofy and, and feeling really clumsy. But I also do agree with you that the last parts where it gets really intense but still has the clumsy control scheme, like I mentioned, you know, when I was uh, wrapping it up for myself, um, those parts were quite frustrating. Right. Um, but they didn't quite ruin it for me. Either way. Yeah, I mean, the game was supposed to be fun and lighthearted, and they took that away. Not only were the situations you put in were no longer fun and lighthearted, but sure. they were made... I was brought even more out of it because I was just, like, clumsily sliding along a, a wet a wet boat deck trying to get over a crate yeah, and that failing. Yeah, that just was tough. Yeah, and there were... You know, it's just that... I don't know what they were thinking. Like, I, I, I honestly think that is a horrible, horrible job by the designers putting that really? in like yeah i just they had they had it right in the beginning parts of the game like just what? mundane everyday life was hilarious and fun and then they just they they made the game they tried to make the game serious and that can't be a serious game well if i had to guess i think what they were going for having played the original the entirety of the game was all the mundane stuff it was like you're just in octodad's house and you're doing things, you have to basically play with his uh, son in the room. Sure. You have to, like, uh, um, help tuck his daughter into bed and, like, crush spiders. Uh, sure. She's scared of them and then check for monsters and that kind of thing. And then I think you had to do a couple fetch quests for his wife and then and then it was over. Uh, the sushi chef guy was there for a brief bit. But right, yeah, we didn't mention earlier, there's <laughs> one guy who can see through your disguise, your... Uh, Oh, so great disguise, um, <laughs> and that's a sushi chef. He's, yeah, it's just a really angry sushi chef that has it out for Octodad, but we can get more into that later. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I, the first one is all the mundane stuff, so I'm assuming the first part of this new one was supposed to be a throwback to that, and then they probably had another vision that they wanted to do for the last part. You know, get a little more ridiculous with it, throw backstory into a game about an octopus wearing a suit sure. which to me is hilarious just the concept of yeah that. the concept was great and and like i said in the early game it was fantastic like you know well I, what i mean is the concept of them even giving you backstory for what's already a completely re like serious backstory for something that's ridiculous to me is 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 funny and but i think I what made it that they did what it. made it good was that there was no backstory like what made it good to me is you were just it, this wacky thing in this 
You know what I mean? You were a, you're a guy dressed, you're, or rather, you're an octopus dressed as a guy, and there's no explanation. And they kind of did that at the end of the game. You know what I mean? There was that one line towards the end that they were like, you know, they're really self aware. Sure. But um, I don't know. I think it was bad. I think it was dumb because it was like I don't know. All these stupid things happened, and it was just kind of like, well, I can't complain that it's stupid because I'm an octopus in a suit. <laughs> like, and it, I don't know because it, it when it was wacky introduced into the normal that's what made it fun when it was wacky surrounded by wacky then it's then you're just part of the this wackiness you're not and there was also like you know action parts where literally all you're doing is clicking you know what i mean that was like yeah, i agree that gameplay wise uh, i didn't appreciate that although you can't do that it was not, a little bit of like days. a little quick timey but but yeah i agree that that part wasn't was that part was probably the worst part gameplay wise yeah, yeah. because it was just so simple and well, it was, it was even, kind of anticlimactic. That's the thing. I don't even think that was the worst part gameplay because really? there were some parts that were just so frustrating to try and wiggle your way through with your. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess we can just agree to disagree there. Like, I I do agree that the action parts were frustrating from a gameplay standpoint, but as far as the story goes, I I, I enjoyed it from beginning to end. But yeah. um, either yeah. way, you know, to each their own. Yeah, of course. Um, so I guess we can break down the game a little further, though, and, and focus on some of the gameplay. Um, we mentioned the controls a little bit. You know, we used the default setup of mouse and keyboard and to, to kind of break down how those controls work because it's so unique. Uh, you can switch between controlling Octodad's leg tentacles and arm tentacles by pressing the middle mouse button. Now, while you're controlling his legs, you use left click and then move the mouse to move his left leg, or right click plus mouse to move the right leg. And when you're controlling his arms, well, it's just one of his arms in single player. You just move the mouse around to move his arm around, and there might be items around you that yeah, you can... Yeah, pick up various things, yeah. push various buttons, and things like that. And then you can actually scroll the scroll wheel to actually move the arm up or down if you need to get higher oh, leverage is, with his arm. Is that? I always, if you held the right mouse button and then moved your mouse up and down, it would go up oh, and down. Oh, okay. I guess there's two ways to do it. Apparently. <laughs> I just scrolled up and down, yeah. so that's That funny. actually would have been easier now that I think about it. You're yeah. Way. But, uh, yeah, oh, and when you're holding items, you can actually jerk the mouse before pressing left click again, and you'll yeah. just chuck it, and that's where, like, the, the physics in the game kind of right. comes into play there, just the way th things bounce around, the ragdoll physics and whatnot uh, are, are really fun and funny, but... Um, yeah, that, that all might sound simple enough, but balancing between each of those things can get really crazy at times. Uh, although it's really funny to watch. Yeah, and then they, they throw in other, you know, classic slapstick things like bananas. Yeah. And, and <laughs> that you can slip around and then, then you know, physics kind of goes out the window on that point because you'll walk up to a banana and fly ten feet in the air or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, Tim, you might have heard me cracking up the other night just in my room. I was playing Octodad and I was in one of those sequences where there's bananas everywhere and it's almost a chain reaction. You slip on one, mm -hmm. and then it and it makes that goofy whoop noise when you slip yeah, on the yeah, banana. Exactly. And Octo Dad just kept slipping, and even though it was frustrating, and I was losing that area, like I couldn't get mad. Like I was just laughing my <laughs> ass off. Yeah, and parts like see that that those parts were brilliant. It was like when you're doing when it's just nothing but physical comedy. That's where the game really shared. Sure. Like the the produce section of the grocery oh, store. Oh yeah, the grocery <laughs> store in general was just a blast. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And and the clumsy controls aren't quite on the same level of uh, like surgeon simulator uh, you or quop or quop. Yeah, that's a good example. Uh, but it's um, still not as easy to pick up as, say, like a platformer or a first-person shooter. Sure. And then, like I mentioned before, there's some stealthy areas or like narrow pathways, and those just get, you know, no matter how careful or precise you are with the controls, yeah, they're just, just tough. It's just tedious. Yeah, it's a little tedious, especially when you're replaying the same areas. Yeah, times. and uh, there's parts where you have to go up, walk up, an escalator that's going down. <laughs> and that is just stupid. Like, yeah, there's no reason that. you should have had to go through that. Yeah, I think they, I had, just, no, they came I up with things to... that would be more and more frustrating, and I think that they maybe didn't realize they could have been pushing the envelope a little too much. Yeah, and the thing is, I, I had to increase my mouse sensitivity to get to that part. Uh, because I was literally going across my whole mouse pad trying to get up this thing, and I was constantly going back and forth, sure. and I just I had to increase the mouse sensitivity to get through that. I just gotcha, got yeah, see, I, I've had my mouse set to 2000 DPI for a long time now, so I'm sure. really used to like, the insanely sensitive you know, mouse movements, right, yeah. so I guess I was lucky in that regard. As far as the, the levels themselves, I mean, I found that most of the levels were, were well designed. Even in the aquarium where things got, you know, a little bit frustrating, I did like the way those areas were designed. I liked the, the deep dark or whatever that was called. That was pretty cool. Sure. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I just disagree. I think I think 
The grocery store was great. You didn't like any of the areas in the aquarium? Uh, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't say. I think the kelp forest was fun. Yeah, the I kelp thought, world was. I thought the a lot of, of the arcade games were just kind of pointless. I felt like they were pointless. Like they were just making you grind at that point Maybe. because it was. Yeah, some of them were just. I don't know. It, they it made like, use of the different ways you use the controls, though, which I appreciated. For instance, the one with the turtle shooting the water, you had to use the function where you move Octodad's arm up and down to actually yeah. hit the top and bottom yeah, row. Yeah, but they, they already made you do those things throughout the game. Like, they're sort just of, making but it was, you it do was them. taking it, and it kind of it repackaged it in a way that, to me, felt kind of fresh. Because I was, like, trying to hit those rows, and I was like, I can't get to... And then I realized, oh, I have to use the up and down arm movement as opposed to, I don't know, sure. to me I, I thought that that was pretty cool because it was like figuring out a puzzle. Yeah, I, I, I suppose, I don't but know. But not all like, of those arcade games were because, that great. I liked the air hockey one, yeah, that's kind of cool. Air, air hockey one was alright, but the thing, even with that one you were talking about where you're shooting the water, stream of water or whatever, it's like, the stream was so inaccurate, like the animation versus where it was actually hitting, like, there were a lot of, uh, I don't know, uh, weird hitboxes, there were a lot of glitches for me, especially, you know. I didn't bump into any glitches, but you mentioned I that you had one. glitched out. I had the game-breaking glitch, among other several smaller glitches. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I, well, it was actually, really glitchy for me. Actually, uh, uh, there was one glitch that I happened a few times where one of his limbs would get kind of like wrapped around something, mm -hmm. and then he'd be kind of stuck, and I'd have to really kind of like jerk or wiggle him, you know, just to get that limb Yeah, there were times where my leg would just, kind of you know, I'd try to lift a leg up, and it would kind of wrap around something, and then when i try to lift it again, it would just keep wrapping. And I was just like, what the... <laughs> There's nothing I can do to undo it, you know what sure. I mean? Sure. So, the graphics in the game are nice. Yeah, um, I like the cartoony style. Yeah, the style's good. Um, for an indie game, they've definitely got everything looking nice and smooth. Um, it's really colorful, and it's worth mentioning, again, that the physics are, are really good. In term, I mean, in the way that they're supposed right, to be. They're, like, they, they fit the game. <laughs> you're always knocking a ton of stuff down. Uh, you're frequently falling down yourself, especially like with those banana peels, or right. if you're trying to climb on top of something and then you manage to slip and he falls down. He always like lands on his back and bounces like an <laughs> idiot. Uh, the ragdoll physics are really fun. Uh, there's some pretty reflection effects that, you know, if they weren't in the game, I probably wouldn't have noticed. But the fact that they were there, uh, that was pretty cool. And, and it's really cool the way it lets you change the graphics settings. It actually shows you an example of what your graphics are going to look like after you make each change. Oh, really? On I the didn't fly, yeah. I so didn't actually try. Yeah, I went in there first because I wanted to adjust my resolution and whatnot. And yeah, changing those other graphics settings, it actually just changes it right away there for you. And Octodad's just standing there. And when you change the physics settings, it'll drop them a little bit to show you how the physics look, which sure. I thought was uh, really cool. Um, and and I could definitely see this game running really well on weaker computers, uh, you know, with all the different sure, graphics yeah. tweaks they let you do. It's not like an intense game graphically, no, but not it's still... Means stylistically, it looks fine. Yeah, I really um, like the look of it. You know, I had it completely maxed out, every single setting maxed out, and it ran smoothly the entire way through with no graphical glitches or stuttering, just those physics glitches we talked about. So that's worth mentioning. The sound quality in this game, uh, like we mentioned earlier, is really good. The voice acting is great. The writing and humor is great. And the music, I found it to be enjoyable enough. It sounds like you actually... Yeah, I love the music. I, I, that was... One of my favorite parts of the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did like, like, I think, I don't remember if it was when you were in the house or whatever, but there was sort of a 50s kind of house, like, oh gosh, I'm trying to come up with an example. Like, you know how The Sims kind of has that goofy kind of 50s, like the modern I, home kind of music. I don't know, I've never really played The Sims. I've seen people play it, but I've never play, paid enough attention to it. You know, um, maybe, maybe like out of uh, old school cartoons or something. Gosh, I wish I could put my finger on exactly what I'm thinking of, but it's, yeah, there's definitely, but, um, and the aquarium actually had some, some nice music, yeah, some serene kind of tracks, but, uh, the, the, the standout track, of course, is the, uh, the, the, the main theme. It's called Octodad. Um, nobody suspects a thing. Nobody suspects a thing. It's yeah, by it's Ian McKinney. One. And it's really catchy. I don't know. I I like the chorus of that song, but otherwise I thought it was pretty lackluster. Yeah. I, I thought the... Yeah, I just thought the ambient music in most parts of the game fit... Just were great. Yeah. They weren't, like... They weren't trying anything particularly special, but they would just fit so well. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then the story... It's simple enough. You're an octopus dressed up in a three-piece suit. Your family thinks you're a regular human being. And uh, Octodad pretty much has everyone fooled except, uh, like we mentioned earlier, for the uh, the raging sushi chef who's hell-bent on catching Octodad and revealing his identity to his family. Yeah. Um, there are a few parts of this game uh, ranging from Octodad and his wife Scarlet's wedding to shopping for groceries, going to the aquarium... Uh, much to Octodad's dismay. Yes, very and, much. And uh, and the aquarium's actually where most of the game takes place. I'd say like the second half of the game is the aquarium. 
uh, and then just a little bit of that backstory sequence that we mentioned, uh, which, once again, I think the idea of backstory in a game about an octopus pretending to be a person is hilarious, and I, I'm glad that they at least tried to do that personally, because I just think that that's such a funny concept. Yeah, I think per my opinion is that it's trite. You I didn't feel like it. that it could do without it. Yes. <laughs> but That uh, whole scene, that whole... Anyway, we'll, we'll move on. Okay. I've already I've already made my peace with that. Right. <laughs> and so while this game is uh, really, really silly, I guess they still managed to get a decent amount of story in there. Yeah, the story if that's was, what you want. It was serviceable. It, it, did, it did the job. And, it, you know, it had a message, which was nice. So, you know. Yeah, for sure. So I guess that's it for Octodad. What did we pick for next week? Uh, the new reboot of the Strider, the old action ninja fighting game. Yeah, like Strider Hear You, like yeah, Capcom? Yeah, Hear You. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be... I'm excited because I played Strider as a kid, and uh, in fact, my my online handle for quite a while when I was like 12 and 13 years old mm -hmm. was Strider, and then... Um, <laughs> That's funny, mine was Trunks, like from Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> at the same, right around the same age range. Yeah, I was Strider, and then I was all had an alter ego, and I was Knight. I don't know, just like a very, <laughs> very, you was know... Was it Knight standard... like Medieval? Or yeah, like, like Medieval, nighttime. like Medieval gotcha. Knight, and then eventually I combined them together and became Knight Strider. <laughs> and that was my handle for a few years. And so if you had ninja training and knight training at the exactly. same time, you'd be unstoppable. Yeah. Be. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I think everybody played as Strider in Marvel vs. Capcom, too. Oh, it was just a blast hell to yeah. Play. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really excited. I've seen already seen some good reviews for this remake of Strider, so I'm excited to play it. Yeah, I'm excited, too. I mean, hey, it's going to be our... Is, is that our first non-indie title? Or have we Technically, I mean, it's, it is still $15, but it's not yeah, an indie it's title. Cheap, it's but it's not an indie title. Hey, the, look at that. We're <laughs> branching out. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, you know, thanks again. You know, leave comments on YouTube or on Shark Tank, you yeah, know, or, or the main website. Yeah, or, you know, you can also see us on SoundCloud and iTunes and that kind of thing. All right, well, peace Bye! Out. See you later. <laughs>